when I go to the farmer groups, the one thing they've asked me before is like, why should we continue farming? Why should I tell my kids to continue farming? There's high risk, very little reward. Wouldn't it be just nicer and easier for us to send them to a city? And even if they get a job as a taxi driver, they're more successful than us and it's a risk-free job. Talking to them though, what I've realized is that we knew how to do it right. You know, farmers knew how to farm sustainably. And it's just a really sad state of affair when I think about it, that people who grow food for us don't have food for themselves. And that has to change. What drew me here was the greenery, the farms, the access to mountains and waterfalls. No Nasties is a clothing brand focused on addressing climate change. We make 100% organic clothing, which is fair trade, vegan and carbon negative as well. This is our climate story. So we're located in the beautiful village of Asagao in North Goa, in this house which has uh, been founded from 1898, so it's about 120 years old. We've uh, restored it to its original glory. It's got beautiful high ceilings, stained glass windows, teak shutters. The goal was to restore it, not renovate it to a modern look, but to try and bring back the old Goan Portuguese heritage which exists around the community here as well. And we just wanted the light to come through and shine through it. The idea with the products at Nonasty is to create classics, evergreen, everlasting products which can be mixed and matched. Nothing trendy, not fast fashion. Everything is made with 100% organic cotton. What we started doing recently is also zero waste collection where the garment is made in the exact pattern of the final product. So there's no wastage at all. The last decade, the climate change has brought in a big factor as well. There's no reliability of the rains coming in. Most of our farms are rain fed. So the typical cycle farmers will take loans to buy the seeds. But if the rains don't come in time, they have to take another loan to buy seeds again. And that, that puts them into further debt. In terms of benefits of organic cotton farming, for the farmers, it's much lower input costs, more reliable. Even if it's a bad crop season, they're not caught up in a cycle of debt. Some of our challenges are monkeys, snakes, caterpillars, bugs. We live in the middle of nature. It's an interesting, sometimes challenging uh, backdrop for what we do. We did this in-house print um, inspired by Yayoi Kusama. We took her design technique but made cotton flower pods from these. Um, you can see each of these is a different pod as well. Just a nice simple space. We're lucky to have a garden. We've done some amount of organic veggie growing as well. We've also started focusing on being conscious of our carbon footprint. So offsets are a big part of our strategy. Um, it's something which we only bring in when we cannot eliminate some processes which create a carbon footprint. Uh, we work with three projects in India, one for solar, one for wind, and one one's a biogas plant. There's a carbon register as well, which tells us exactly how much carbon was offset because of our actions. At this point, we invest in tree plantations in mangroves in Mozambique. Uh, mangroves sequester 30 to 40% more, they grow a lot faster, and beyond removing carbon dioxide, they also provide a natural barrier for protection from the ocean. The first reaction to the pandemic was just panic. Like, holy shit, what are we gonna do? At that point, about 60% of our revenues were coming from B2B private label work, industry, which all came to a grinding halt. We had to shut our store for two, three months. Uh, online e-commerce also it came to a grinding halt because there were no deliveries. Our supply chain got affected really badly. In fact, probably more so than uh, the other aspects of our work. What happened after the initial lockdowns was just almost like a blessing in disguise. A lot of folks moved to Goa where we are based. Our stores started doing fantastic. The adoption of e-commerce accelerated in India. Uh, we're still a small brand, but we're happy. No Nasties at this point is an extension of most of my values and belief systems. And that's what is really important to us. We still think we're in the early stages of what needs to be done for climate change. The way I look at it is our first 10 years were around sustainability. The next 10 years is all around climate change. 
by most approximations, we have less than 10 years before we reach a tipping point where it's too late. My name is Apurva Bakari. I'm the founder of No Nasties. This is our climate story.